<laughs> what a premise. <laughs> no. Three's company is, I don't want to give anything away. Three's Company is a series of awkwardly funny misadventures. Three's Company is a trip. You get it? Jack Tripper. Jack. Ah. Good. Three's Company is a mm -hmm. sitcom of the late 70s. <laughs> That's right. Very and great. early 80s. Hello, everybody, yeah. and welcome to Falling Towers Watch the First Podcast, a podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. We are you doing... Can. I know, you're right. Let's we are doing place. 80s month. Can you believe it? 80s sitcom. So any sitcom that took place in the 80s, even mm -hmm. if it was half in the 70s and half in the 80s, or half in the 80s and half in the 90s, or all in the 80s, whatever it is, we're doing it in the comments below. Make your suggestions. What 80s sitcom would you like us to review in the month of November? Let's get up into this. We are doing BTF Three's New Heart. We are doing Three's <laughs> New Company, Heart. everybody. I uh, Bob Newhart was my uh, regular back in the day oh. at a nice oh, restaurant man. in West We would always order an Amstel Light and only drink half. But he never oh. guest starred on Three's Company. I don't know that to be true. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the Bob Newhart so, show but... overlapped it, so he probably didn't. Okay, not not Newhart, but the uh, the previous one, the Bob Newhart show. Different so name. everybody, please be sure to like this video. Uh, give us a five star rating if you're listening in. Please subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube. Leave us a review. Thank you very much. Let's get into this. Very, very exciting. By the way, this is for the late. Great, Suzanne Summers, Oop. an absolute trailblazer, a freaking yes. genius, and uh, somebody that I have a ton of respect for. Rico E. Anderson is here. He made the suggestion. He said, dude, you should do Three's Company. And we're like, dude, we happen to be doing 80s month. What's up, Rico? And I said, dude, let's make it happen. Woo. Yeah, you saw that gun show moving on. <laughs> Rico's an actor. The gun show. Also, uh, so he is our special guest co-host. Our other special guest co-host is actor Darth Shuey Gun Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at them yokes. Just one ticket to the gun show. <laughs> no problem. And uh, Dr. Muhammad Noor is a <laughs> professor in vice provost at duke university he's also an occasional science advisor he does all kinds of stuff with fruit flies if i remember correctly Good What's up, Muhammad? hey wow. always always a pleasure to be back on falling towers watch the first of things <laughs> all right oh and darth you guys is wearing a shirt that says the regal freaking beagle how cool is that is that that's shirt. not flipped around, is it? Can you read that or no? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Or is it backwards? Oh, we see the it. Reason it doesn't have the freaking in it. It just has a <laughs> shirt. Man. That, that so cool. Where'd you get that shirt, Darth? Uh, just uh, I think my mom bought it for me actually, but I'm guessing Amazon. I think it was me. Wow. Was no? it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And I was that, wearing that's... a few minutes ago a shirt you got for me. This is so much fun. Yeah, Everybody's so bored. Like Let's get into this. <laughs> Three's company. Muhammad, where do we go now? Now we're in a predicament. This is where we predict Ooh. what each other thought of the show before watching it this time. Though somehow I think all of us maybe have seen at least an episode of this before this time. Yeah, at least one episode. <laughs> maybe. We'll yeah, see. Man, I don't know what you've been doing this whole time. There may be one among us yeah. that has never seen any of it, but we're about I to know. find out. Yes. So Rico and I have known each other for 10 years. And a couple weeks. Sure, yeah. So we know each other well. Darth and I have known each other since middle school, since uh, what was that, the Truman administration. Yeah. And yeah. Muhammad and I have known each other for a few years pretty well. Muhammad, Rico, Darth, you have all known each other for a few years, off and on, mm -hmm. somewhat decently. We know each other pretty well. We can mm -hmm. predict. Hey. Muhammad. Yes, Rico. Did, did Darth have uh, all that facial hair back in middle school? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, it was on his shade back, every morning. But oh. 
that's where the real beard is. That was the PG <laughs> joke. There are other versions. Yeah, we see the two his face. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. <laughs> Look, it's still early guys, in the show. The point is, we have got to get Muhammad to tell us. Mm. Yes. Uh, what the show is? No, I'm going to make my prediction yeah. first. Actually, I almost yeah. went out of order. Muhammad's going to yeah. go after that. Muhammad, I predict that you like this pretty high, like eight or eight and a half. I think you're. I think you're like. I think you watched this show before. <laughs> he checks his name. I always have to check. I, I never remember. Like, okay. And I think <laughs> I think you enjoyed this. I think you had fun, Darth Shuey. I think you mm-hmm. laughed a lot. I think you've seen this show a bunch. I think you like this show and you laughed a lot and we'll give it a very high mark. Rico, I think you were right at freaking home. You're like, give me some more Mr. and Mrs. Roper. (laughs) Give me all of that Mr. and Mrs. Roper right now. I think you got like a pepperoni pizza and we're sitting in boxer shorts and we're like, it's 1982 all over again. This is the best day of my life. And I think you enjoyed it very much. But those are my predictions. What do you think, Muhammad? I think there's going to be universal positivity. Ryan, I think, I know you've talked about the show a ton. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, I mean, obviously it's one of the things, it's always dangerous when you go back and, and revisit something that you love. But I, I think you were going to fe- feel like it held up at least okay, you know, so in that sense. And, and you're going to have a lot of just good feelings for it in general. Like, oh my gosh, this is how it all started. So I think you're going to be, Pretty positive, a uh, very positive. Excuse me, uh, Darth. Also, I think you're going to be very positive as well. I think you're going to be like, yeah, this was great, Rico. I think you're <laughs> going to be positive, but maybe just like a just like one notch below Ryan and Darth. I think I think, mm. I think it was good, but also like maybe a little dated. <laughs> what do you think, Rico? Well, um, Muhammad, I think I think you you liked it, man. I, I think you. Uh, I think you got a kick out of it and, you know, it probably brought back memories and, you know, it's just, just really cool nostalgia for you. <clears throat> uh, so Darth of Shuey, I feel like you really liked it. And of course, as you were swatting flies for Muhammad to play with later, to me, um, to me. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you, you definitely <laughs> liked it. And, um, you know, the Regal Beagle kind of gives it away, but here we are. Um, <laughs> you never know. Uh, Could have got it at a thrift store. Sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, Ryan T to the husk. Um, T I, to I, the I, husk. I, I know you liked it. And, and in fact, I know you loved it. In fact, where you say I'm sitting up in my box of shorts with a pepperoni <laughs> pizza, I feel like you were sitting up in your bikini underwear mm. with a banana hammock. Mm. <laughs> banana hammock. <laughs> well, we were oh, well. <laughs> now we're PG 13. Um, and um, yeah, man, eating hummus and loving it. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> or eating gourmet eggs and loving it and um and just loving it and and really um uh, taking loving in it. the nostalgia and okay. everything. I, I think all three of you guys were all about the nostalgia and just loving every minute of this and um was just just here for it from mm-hmm. beginning to end. Darth, your predictions. Um yeah, I I I I, I agree with everybody that everybody's gonna think everything's positive, you know. Um, but Orion, yeah, brought up a good point uh, that I would say for him, what he said about Rico, about the Ropers. I feel like the Ropers really, like, uh, really grabbed you in this episode, you know. Oh, totally. mm-hmm. Everybody else, yeah, the nostalgia, it's kind of funny because I don't, watching it, I don't feel, uh, I don't know, like a nostalgic vibe. I get more like just, um, I feel like I'm watching it like more at the time, you know. Like, yeah, it's like, kind of weird, like a Jack wears cowboy boots, you know, it's a very 70s thing and everything. But, uh, yeah, I guess everybody, everybody's good. Everybody has a warm, all three of you guys have a warm spot in your heart for the show, for these guys, for the writing, everything. All right, everybody. You know what that means. It is, it is time for everybody in the live chat or in the comments below to make your predictions. Do you think Dr. Muhammad Noor liked this show? He's quite a wild card, that guy. 
Do you think Rico liked this first episode entitled A Man About the House? Do you, a man about a horse would be funny too. Uh, Darth, do you think, sorry, do you think Darth liked this show? Do you think I liked this one? Let us know in the comments below or in the live chat. Make your predictions now. Take your time, no rush. Dr. Muhammad Noor is going to tell us what this show is even a boot. I will indeed. Chrissy and Janet are recovering from a party and looking for a new roommate <laughs> when, when they discover a passed out Jack Tripper in their bathtub. They let him borrow some clothes and while his wet clothes are dry, uh, they chat with him. But awkwardnesses erupt when the landlord couple come knocking. Once to find Jack, startling them with being male, and the other time to find a potential new roommate who was demonstrably not male. <laughs> after, after trying some of Jack's cooking, Chrissy and Janet invite him to move into the empty room. But the landlord couple return and are against the idea of a man moving in with two women, but they relent when Janet lies and tells them that Jack is gay. <laughs> what a premise. <laughs> I know, I know that. that's that's the premise, and the the producers are like sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. green light. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. Do you're it telling today. You're telling me he has to pretend he's gay for the duration of the series. <laughs> oh, I'm in. Where do I sign the check? We're gonna make right. so much money. <laughs> All right. So uh, everybody at home, keep writing. Uh, make your predictions. This is a toughie. Dr. Noor, where do we go here? Ah, this is my favorite part of the show. This is Expect Kitchen. We spend a little bit of time on what we expected before we watched the show, and a lot more time on what we actually get in when we actually saw the show. Sorry, Darth. Give me the tour. Or as Ryan <laughs> likes to say, we compare and contrast what we expected before watching the show from what we got. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Noor, speaking of which, before watching this first episode of Three's Company entitled A Man About the House, mm -hmm. what did you expect, if anything? It's interesting. I'm actually not positive I'd watched a whole episode of this before. Like, I was certainly mm -hmm. very aware of it being on. Uh, yeah. I, I know I've seen bits of it. Like, I've definitely seen it on TVs and things like that. But I'm not sure if I actually sat down and watched the whole episode. Like I knew I knew who the three characters were, but I, I honestly didn't remember, and I can say this now since it's, it was in the intro, I actually didn't remember that that Jack was pretending to be gay for the whole series. Mm -hmm. I, I did not remember that. Remember that, remember that remember that? I did not remember that. So I did oh, not remember wow. that was a plot line for this. I just remember it wow. was like a guy and two women, and it was a sitcom, and it was from that era. I think what happened is when it was on, and especially when I was younger when it was on, my parents wouldn't let me watch it. They were like, no, you can't watch that. That one's too dirty. <laughs> that was like their, their thing about this show. That's so. crazy that that was kind of racy at the time, you know? That was like a yeah. big deal. Yeah, it was definitely considered, at least by my parents, you know, but it, it was yeah. definitely considered on the racy side there. I think later, you know, as I got a little bit older, I caught, again, maybe I watched the whole episode. Maybe I watched just parts of it. So, because I certainly remember being on, and I remember like being in the room with it, the, and they didn't watch it, but I remember being in the room with other people as they would see it. But I'm not sure if I'd actually watched the whole episode before. I didn't know the actual plot. I definitely knew the theme song very well, though. Yeah. Oh, man. Very oh, yeah. interesting. Uh, we're finding out today that Dr. Noor was raised by the Ropers themselves, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they're, so, they're like, no shenanigans. This no is crazy. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, one of us here may or may not have done a uh, cover, a punk cover of the ah, Three's Company I was gonna, I was just about to theme say that. song. That's right. What? Wait, yeah, I've got a, How many of us I've got a bands back in the day. I've got a cover of the Three's <laughs> Company theme song. Uh, wow. But Rico, that's a badass oh, wow. cover too. You do. Fun. You got to put out a link. You I gotta might put a link. Somewhere. I might play it. Uh, Rico yeah, E. See, Anderson. Be a copy somewhere. What did you expect, if anything? Ah, uh, wow. I, you know, I expected, I expected the the brand of comedy that more or less came out of that era and i which is which i was i i was and am still a huge fan of and so i expected that i i expected of course also the sign of the times which uh related a lot to that era and um and stuff like that so yeah that that's 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 where my head was at 
Hmm. What about you, Darth? What did you expect, if anything? Yeah, well, it's interesting. Uh, Rico brings up a good point because it, I feel like, yeah, it, it was a very progressive time in society, but at the same time, television was, I feel like, still pretty conservative. So it's like they kind of really had to walk the line of, it's very kind of pushing the envelope, but yeah, you look at it now and it's like, man, that's extremely tame. Um, <laughs> exp- what I expected, wait, yeah, what I expected, um, yeah, it's tough because the first time, and if you're more familiar with the with the whole rest of the run of the show, um, you, you kind of don't really know what to expect out of the pilot. Is the pilot going to be good? Was it as good? Was the quality that good right out the gate? Um. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know. Just maybe just a, I would say if I was going at this completely blind, like, a, yeah, just a, a, a kind of a kill, kill a half hour sitcom of television, you know, at the time, whatever, you know, they got to fill a half hour, you know, let's try and make something funny mm-hmm. and hope for the best. Hopefully we got some good actors and some good writers. Well, I'll tell y'all what I expected, if anything. Um, if anything. As, as a child, I grew up watching these reruns. And it uh, became my favorite sitcom growing up. I remember watching the reruns all the time. I don't remember if it was in the afternoon or at night, but I just remember always watching them. And uh, to this day, it's still my favorite sitcom ever. I haven't watched it in a very long time because I feel like I watched every episode ever when I was a kid. I may have seen them all. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) So, but I haven't seen it in a long time also because, you know, I've seen it, so I don't need to go revisit it. I'm not one of those guys that needs to go rewatch things over and over again. I like to move on. But, you know, as I wanted to basically be uh, Jack Tripper when I was growing up. But I think I, I as as I became Super more of cool. an adult, I realized that I was more of an amalgamation of all the dudes. Jack, Larry, Mr. Roper, Mr. Furley. I feel like I was all of those things, <laughs> different parts of each, Larry. but definitely some Larry, definitely some Mr. Roper in there. <laughs> so, yeah, so I expected that I would probably like it. I wasn't sure if it was hold up. I spoke with our friend uh, John Orchiola, who covers Star Trek on Screen Rant. I said I was a little worried it might not hold up. And he said, I saw it recently and it definitely still holds up. So I said, mm-hmm. okay. But that's what I expected. That's what convinced you to do it. <laughs> yeah, I think we we're going to do it already. I was just a little worried because sometimes you watch things and it's you remember it being funny, and it wasn't when Why you just I like thought it was. So yeah. So yeah. now, Doctor <laughs> Nor, that's what we expected. What did you actually get? So it's interesting. I actually found the first half a little tiring. Like, I just found it a little bit, yeah, I was like, you eh. watch your mouth right now. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> the second half, though, I thought was a lot more, a lot funnier. I was, and I went in a little bit nervous about this because like, oh, this is a 70s cartoon. Is this going to be like, and, and I think part of it isn't so much, I don't think it's so much anything about the show per se, but I think Rico made the comment earlier too, that uh, basically a, a sign of the times and that, that sort of Dated over, Ricky. that sort of overacting that you see in shows uh-huh. from then as opposed to now, that whole like, oh no, what are we going to do? And it's like, there's so much body movement. Yeah, like, what are you, why are you talking like that? Like, sit still, calm down, you know, and just over exaggerated everything. To me, I just found that like, what are they doing? I mean, I, I remember that was typical. I mean, you think, you know, thinking, you know, further back, like when think about Carol Brady talking or something like that, it was very, Kind of over the top done, for example, and that, that was even Ordering more on so. For, yeah, we're on theatrical acting, and it was even more so for the more the 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 this sort of sitcom as opposed to more of the family sort of thing. So that took a little getting used to, but I definitely felt like line wise there was an increasing number of funny things that I thought were funny as it went through. So overall, actually, I thought it held pretty well in that sense, like especially for a seventies sitcom. I was like, okay, that. I, by the end, I was like, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that more than I feared I, I might. <laughs> Ooh, so Muhammad's a little tough to please today. That's going to be a toughie. Yeah. Huh? Tough nut to crack. <laughs> what about Spicy. you, Rico? How easy is your nut to crack? What did you actually get? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I know we were talking about these company here. So, yeah, listen, um, I, I, I. I got all that I mentioned and what, what I really loved about it was the fact that um, what, one of the things that it really reminded me of was just 
how it 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 gave the introduction to how great John Ritter was back then when it came to things like physical comedy. Oh, you know? yeah. And I'm speaking just when he stepped out of the bathtub. That was great. And exactly. that little slip, I was like, you like you look at it and you're like, was that intentional or was did that was was that a mistake? And he just rolled with it because it was so choreographed. So if, if, if it was if it was if he if that was intentional, it was choreographed per per perfectly. Because if it wasn't. Nuts would have been smashed because the way he just stepped out of that thing was oh, like, yeah, gonna broke his head. Yeah, but but it, well, more than his head. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it was just it was just it was just great. It was it was it was great physical comedy. If it wasn't if it was intentional, and uh, it it does set up a plethora of you know things that uh, did relate to Jack Tripper. Um and uh that was good to see. And of course, you know, we we got we got the uh the the relationship of the of the ladies and and you know where where they're at and I I just felt like everybody's everybody's um everybody's character was set up well. There were mm -hmm. nice setups, nice introductions that um not being heavy handed. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think there were nice introductions that let us know this is what you're about to get yourself into. Yeah, yeah, it's a perfect I setup. Do. Yeah, if you decide to take this journey with us, here's what you're gonna get. Here's just a, here's a taste of what you're gonna get. And that is what you actually got. Very good. Uh <laughs> well. Darth, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Darth the Laugher, you just said it was a perfect setup about 20 seconds ago. What did you actually get? A perfect setup? Uh, yeah, and I, I yeah, also wanted to speak on uh, uh, John Ritter's physical comedy because, man, I just threw out the whole run of the show. It's just it's so natural but funny at the same time. You know, it's just is a, I say, like a physical comedy genius, you know. Um, what I actually got, um, yeah, it's a perfect, like, especially say you're familiar with the show, seeing the show in the reruns, and then you see the, the setup here, how it all be. It's a good, it's a perfect uh, setup for, for yeah, what to, it's a very basic setup, and now, like, that's all you need to know about the show. Here's these characters, here's their situation, their living situation, the roommates, and it's all pretty funny, you know? Very good. Well, I'll tell y'all what I got. Uh, what I got was a Pretty big disappointment, sadly. Ooh, really? uh, no, 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 no. I, I was got about to say one show. <laughs> Where's the Ryan that we know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it and I feel like I had seen this episode a few times. I recognized I it, it especially time. like the bathtub scene. I remember that very well. Yeah. I also Iconic. noted I also noted the bathtub slip, and I watched it three times because I, I assumed it was deliberate. Maybe it wasn't. And I was like, that's a really dangerous stunt that he's yeah. doing for comedy. And then you realize that throughout the course of the of the series, he's having wrestling matches with ironing boards. <laughs> he's falling all over the, his yep. little place. He has yep. a couple episodes where his balls come out of his boxer shorts, literally. <laughs> but there are some moments that the censors missed. And he's just all over the place. He's burning. He's falling downstairs. Amazing. Go to yoga so, classes, aerobics classes. Anytime there's some kind of physical thing and Jack gets involved, you're like, all right, this is going to be funny. That's right. And so this is what I actually <laughs> got. What I actually got was an enjoyable show, a very good pilot. It's very clear what kind of show we're going to get. It's very clear who the characters are. Although the one character that seemed less developed that I remembered was Chrissy Snow. I remember her being much mm -hmm. dumber, having the more dumb delivery. And I think what it was was her comic genius of delivering lines in a dumb way or in a in a clueless or airheady way made the writers adjust to her. And then she could really show off her acting chops, kind of like Woody Harrelson in Cheers, mm -hmm. you know, where he was really good at that kind of delivery. Anyway, so overall, yeah, I was very happy with it. I thought it was good. There was only one line that I thought did not hold up that you know kind of screeched my gears a little bit but everything else surprisingly worked um what was the 
Well, I'll have to tell you in a moment. So that's what I got. <laughs> Stand by. Okay. Actually, I could tell you guys right now. So yeah, tell us now. That's, my that's concern was that, you know, comedy doesn't hold up. Sometimes even just watching shows from the 90s, like you watch a show from, say, like 1998, and you go, oh, shit, that was racist, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, you see, yeah. And you're like, whoa, man, you guys, that, or, you know, or something like that. So I was worried something would be sexist in here, stuff? or the fact that he's pretending to be gay. Now, Muhammad, fear not. The show is not about him being gay. He doesn't act gay predominantly. It's just every once in a while that kind of comes into play. But that's not what the show is about, mercifully. Yeah, and it is played for laughs, but I mean, you right? Know. Mercifully, otherwise that joke would get old very yeah. quickly, and it would not age well. Um, no. But the one line that I really thought was like, ooh, it even got me and I'm just dumb, is when the guy said, or when Mr. Roper, which was funny, he pokes at the lady's boobs, right? Oh. And the look on his face was very like, oh, you know, petrified. Fine, we get it. It's funny. He's an old dummy. He's poking. He thinks, well, you know, and he reacts. But then after she leaves, she says, he didn't even say please. Yeah. Like, eh, yeah. Eh. That was the one yeah. that, yeah, that, didn't, that didn't the record well. scratch for me, where I was like, ooh, that's <laughs> yeah. that's not a that that one does that one did not age well for me. Yeah, Everything that, else that was very much was a part okay. of the normalized. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. I, I I just felt like, yeah, I and I agree with you on that. That that was like part of the normalized uh sign of the time where yeah, something sure. like that you know, would easily fly. I kind of feel like it's something that's something that would could still fly or would still fly today, depending on the show and where it's aired and stuff like that. You know, if the care, if her character had been introduced as a lady that's very loose and free or flirtatious or that matched her personality, sure. but for her to be like an all business type bubble and say that it's yeah, like, yeah. whoa, that's anyway, but that, that was yeah. the one line I thought yeah, everything else was, was very, and and I thought it was really cool that Mr. Roper, who's like, no hanky panky and this and that. And, no, sex is gross and Mrs. Roper is dumb. <laughs> but then when he gets explained that Jack is gay, he's like, you're a fine, outstanding oh, yeah. young man. You're very welcome in my home. And I was like, that is a very, yeah, that's very good. I love yeah, that. Aggressive. That was very progressive yes. for the time. Very I, progressive. Especially for a character like Mr. Roper, who's supposed yeah. to be the opposite of that. Yeah. Well, and it's also cool that they sure, didn't go back to any type of like, um, um, you know, homophobia where, you know, along with no hanky panky in the house, no gay people in the house, you know, they didn't go there. And um, yeah. that's obviously a good thing. And um, yeah, it, 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 it became, it became okay, you know? Uh, so I mentioned earlier that Rico was like, give me some more of them ropers. Did you guys have a favorite <laughs> character in this particular episode, Muhammad? Oh, yeah. He's only seen this one episode. Yeah, gotta, I mean, it's one that I know really well. Dig yeah, deep in this right? guy. Yeah. <laughs> no. I guess, I mean, by performance, it would have to be Jack Tripper. I mean, he, he clearly was, was the best in that regard. In terms of who I want to, who would I want to hang out with? I guess Janet. I mean, she seems up your alley. Yeah. Yeah. She's cool. What about you, Rico? Do you have a favorite character based on this episode? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna break the rules here and say characters. I really did dig the Ropers, and I actually love their whole setup, which you know again gave us the gave us the um, the this is what's going to you know th this is how we're going to portray these characters. This this is going to be the relationship that you're going to if you follow us um that you're going to be privy to and just their back and forth and i love how even in the beginning like mrs roper was like well i guess the head of the house show should go let them know what's up oh, that was mrs. Good roper one. starts to leave and she's like just wait until my nails are dry <laughs> I, thought that was great. I thought that was just great and then of course you know just the whole back and forth of um where you know she's she's a lot more just free-spirited and he's just very like and like uh, a motorcycle exactly <laughs> and it well, just well. it just it just worked i i just you know i you know it's the ropers i mean what can you do mm -hmm. um 
you just love them. So, and those, Mrs. Those, Roper, my, sorry. My, yeah, no, Mrs. Okay. Roper was very sweet too when she comes up and says hi to Chrissy to, to reprimand them. But she's sense. like, hi, dear. She puts her hand on her mm -hmm. shoulder. They seem like they have such a great little friendship. But Darth, who was your favorite character? Yeah, it's gonna be a generic. Uh, I'm just I'm gonna sound like every every fan of Three's Company from back in the day. It was Jack Tripper. I mean, he's a he's a great character, great actor. And I'll say uh, what I was gonna say about the show overall, but definitely for him and his performance. I think it's a testament to this pilot because you can watch even even a lot of the characters were replaced going forward. And I feel like the, there's a consistency through the whole show. Like you watch this pilot. It doesn't, you know, like a lot of shows, they change a lot after the pilot or after the first season. This is pretty consistent all the way through. All mm -hmm. things considered, you know, I, I, yeah, so yeah, I would have to say you just, yeah, I mean, John Ritter, he's great. That's why everybody loves John Ritter is this one character, right? Pretty much. Uh, also, he played an incredibly good character in what I think is possibly still to this day, the best movie I've ever oh. seen in my life, Sling Blade. I knew it. And yeah, when yeah, I saw I Sling Blade blindly, didn't know anything about it, me and our good friend Aaron Musicant, shout out to him. Yeah, so you were the one that showed me that one. Yeah. Um, I was like, whoa, it's Jack Tripper. And he was amazing in it. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you my favorite character. I... It's easy for me to say this, but I can't choose like they were all they were all so good. I mean, I guess maybe Jack Tripper, but there are a couple things I noticed and I figured I would. But when I was a kid, they all just seemed like a bunch of old people. Now, looking back, I'm like, oh, those kids. I'm like calling hey, them kids. Exactly. in my mind. I'm, I'm like, those three kids, those rascally little, little kids. They're just kids <laughs> trying to make it in the mean streets of Santa Monica. Give them a break, Roper. These, these are kids. I'm thinking of them as kids, honestly. But on the character front, Jack was great. Chrissy was always great. But I never really liked Janet as a kid. I was just oh, kind of wow. like, I was, a kid. Oh, I was kind of like, oh, that was the ugly one, or that was the the stick in the mud. Yeah, the stick in the mud. The 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 one that was always preaching and you know yeah, condescending and off, teaching yeah. you know lectures. But watching it now through twenty eight year old eyes, I was like, <laughs> no, she's great. She was great. She was wonderful. Very charming. Very. She just, you know, what it was was she was just freaking normal. <laughs> while yeah, everybody else yeah. was crazy really? that's what exactly. I wanted to say. It's a little more exactly. responsible and a little more like no guys let's stay focused you know you need a character yeah. like you that need that is. somebody yeah. like that you're, like, if you're gonna run around like an yeah. idiot you need yeah, a smart straight. regular person yeah and also <laughs> go against also Chris in, and Jack. yeah and, and, uh, and also in comedy you know there's always you know the straight person the straight guy you know yeah. the person who's you know the 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 person who basically sets them up so the comedic shut up stay focused down yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was Janet. She was this. She was the straight guy. Straight guy. So, mm -hmm. yeah. well, somebody had to be. Am I right? That's a Roper oh! joke right there. Hey. 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 We'll be right back after these. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Muhammad, let's hear a little more from you. Did you have any highlights and lowlights for this episode? Yeah, like I said the first half just didn't engage me. Like, like the bathtub thing. I like the the physical comedy you mentioned about that. But I remember thinking, like, how can he possibly be asleep while he's like getting that wet? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What?" I thought about yeah, that. Yeah. I thought about that. that yeah, that usually would wake you up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was funny actually. The comment actually I wrote after the first set of commercials because we watched it on a streaming thing. It actually had commercials in there. The comment, the comment I wrote was the commercials are actually better than the show. You watch your oh. damn mouth right now. <laughs> but like yeah. I said, it got it got much better as as I went along. <laughs> um, I think what was the best? Actually, the funniest line was actually in the first half, even though I thought the overall the second half was better. The the comment, I think. Uh, and one of them said Eleanor had a boy, and I think it was Jack's reply. Is like, yeah, she yes. must have. Yeah, she <laughs> must have. <laughs> yes. That was great. Or what about? I actually when, wrote that down. I wrote that was that a down. very witty yeah. line. When Jack like says, "I'll need some breadcrumbs," and Chrissy goes, "I think I have some in my bed." Also, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah, love it. You don't make breadcrumbs; they just fall off. Yeah. <laughs> what else you got, Muhammad? That because that yeah. was a great one. She must have. Yeah, near the end, the comment about uh, Platonic. What does that mean? Like you and me, Stanley. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. I said, there, was, there was definitely the latter half. There were more funny things in general. Definitely, yeah. I also, just some a lot funny. More the second half. And when that when that Patricia person came over, and there was that comment about chin wagging, I was like, 
that a what? What does that even mean? What yeah, old term. But then they seem as, as confused as I was. So like, okay, I guess that, I guess it was weird even for them too. Or that kind of like you can call me Pattykins, and they're like Patricia. <laughs> so, yeah. And then what about what about when he was clearly playing favoritism, like? Here you go, Chrissy. You sit right here. Oh, and he pulls yeah. out the chair, yeah. and Jan's like, "What about me?" And he's like, "Oh, you're right over sitting. there." Or when he looks at Jan, he <laughs> says, "He says, well, I'll have to think about it." And he turns to Chrissy, he's like, "I'll take it." That's brilliant. That's good stuff. <laughs> that was what a good setup. Rico, Funny, but a good setup. Favorite moments from you, Rico? Um. Well, I I, I have to piggyback off of uh, what Muhammad said with that that one line of uh, "She had a boy. She must have." I that. <laughs> that made me pause. That that was hilarious. Um, I the the him getting out of the bathtub and him that that little that little slip. I was like, that was that was great. Um, pretty much the, the, the all the setups of of the Ropers with just the sexual innuendos and and uh, one of the lines that that I really loved was when um, they were they both came downstairs. And they had mentioned uh, the these guys had mentioned their relationship, and somebody said we're platonic, and this is Roper goes like our marriage, like my mm. marriage, our That's marriage, or something mean. like that. Yeah. What about when uh, Mrs. Roper zings him? She says, "Stanley, I know a man when I see one," and then she turns him. She's like, <laughs> "Mainly from memory." Yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> it, I mean, it was just it, just all those setups are just the thing that just. It, it, it's just gold for the ropers you're you're getting the ropers It's like this is what you're about to get and we about to hit you with a bunch of them in the first episode um it was great um that is all i could think of right now um oh i will say this is kind of a like but a weird thing so am i the only person oh boy who thinks that the opening the opening part of the song is a little bit creepy. The way it goes, I'm not gonna die. <laughs> never is new. I'm not I never I'm saying it. it's creepy when you think about it. Listen to it again and think about it in that context. Have the twin All girls right. singing it. <laughs> Take a step that is new. Feel the lovable place that needs your face. Three's company. Do they're just saying welcome? You're Everything is yeah, great in the seventies. The lovable place that needs your face. Hmm. Cut <laughs> off <laughs> and hung up they on the wall. They need viewers, otherwise they're up here. Darth, and Anthony Hopkins have, uh, to sing it. <laughs> some funniest moments, Darth, for you. Yeah. Well, was it when Jack the... woke up in the bathtub and covered his his nether regions that out of habit? That was pretty funny. That was yeah, even okay, the, the, like, the slip choice. for sure was great. The the slip coming out of the tub was great. But I, I loved all the dialogue. I loved the whole scene in the kitchen. With like Jack knowing how to cook and like how terrible they were. And there was just this one line where he kind of, where Chrissy says something about like a boiling an egg or oh, so-and-so does it. And he just kind of gives like a little pat on the head, like a little pat. Can't punch <laughs> yeah, that was cute. Like that little thing he does. And then he go kind of walks off to the range. I was like, man, that was perfect. Like, I don't know if they could write that or if that's just, you know, the own the performance. But all of that, like all of his, like his knowing how to cook and everything. Like, I loved all that. That was great. Yeah, that's the magic of uh, John Ritter. He looks at oh, her and he man, just went, yeah. hmm, like a loving, like, <laughs> oh, don't ever change. You're precious. Uh, right now, Muhammad's thinking, like, I don't know why these guys like this show so freaking much. It's, yeah, it was no, okay. It was okay. By the end, especially, it was good. Uh, okay, or I'll, I'll just throw out a couple other yeah, moments when uh, – What's her name? Janet comes out into the. She's in the bathroom too. She's holding the ladle. Jack shakes Chrissy's hand, and then he shakes the ladle oh, yeah. in, in Janet's ladle. hand. Oh, These are all that. funny little moments. Mm. Uh, I did watch Jack three times slip out of the bathtub to like watch. I'm like, that is a dangerous stunt. But now I'm going to go back and watch it to watch the girls and see their reaction. If they react, oh. if they break character for a second, it'll we'll know that it was probably un, unplanned. But if they don't react if they stay in character we'll know that that's just they didn't care about lawsuits back then they're like oh yeah you want to yeah. slip you want to yeah do it that'll be it'll be funny yeah. everybody <laughs> yeah, <laughs> collect my money anyway um who cares about an actor getting getting major injuries when jack says the the egg dish and she says what's that and he goes french that was also funny <laughs> that was pretty good. 
You just uh, like it because you're French. Stop it. Just stop it. Yeah. I also liked it when Mr. Roper was poking Jack's chest as well. He was like, yeah, this guy, I, you know, he's poking around on <laughs> Jack as well. I mean, the whole check. thing, you know, um, when Chrissy says, how would you like? And Jack goes, I like it already. <laughs> he so Muhammad, he's a hornball is the funny thing. Yeah, no, I mean that's clear from the intro's music. Or the intro joke here. Right? Yeah. He falls off his bike because he's looking at that woman walking by. All right, what? but we we do have to move forward. Oh, sorry, Rico, go ahead. I, I just want to just uh add real quick one one last thing that that I thought it was a great setup to to what they're basically saying this is you know going to be a big part of the series or a part of the series um the whole take your clothes off portion of uh the beginning when you know his, his clothes are wet and you know they're gonna throw it in the um oven. in the oven and stuff yeah, yeah. And, and just that whole just that whole back and forth it, it's just it was just great it was it, it just the whole thing was just mm -hmm. just wonderful setups and i, I was I was just here for it. I, I really enjoyed that part. The written comedy outside of the, the acting choices and the slapstick, the written comedy is always a misunderstanding. It's always just saying yeah. something that's taken the wrong way or somebody listening somebody in. the wrong thing. Yeah. And they're like, what are you guys doing in there? And they're like, we're just basting a turkey, bro. <laughs> Naked. <laughs> that's that what they call it these show. days. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. There you go. See if they're still hiring Muhammad. All right. <laughs> so let's move forward. Rico E. Anderson, you are an actor. Can you please tell us, by the way, we know you're not acting right now. There's still an ongoing strike, but you've been doing it for quite some time. This is something I've always wanted to know. What was the best piece of acting advice you've ever gotten from a professor, mm -hmm. from a fellow actor? Were there a few? What is it? Uh, the late, great Robert Guillaume who played Benson Wow! Yeah. Um, was someone that I had the distinct honor of knowing. And Whoa. I've admired him ever since I was a little boy, uh, uh, seeing him in the musical Pearly. And, you know, going from Pearly to just so many different wonderful roles that he played, uh, from Soap to Benson, uh, Lean On Me. Just an amazing, amazing actor. Um, wonderful role model as, as an actor coming up. Uh, I had the opportunity to sit and talk with him and meet him and, and just, just spend time with him. And at the end of our conversation, as I was uh, saying my goodbyes to him, um, he said, you have a great smile. Don't ever let Hollywood take that away from you. Whoa. And you know, with Hollywood being Hollywood and how Hollywood can Hollywood, like Hollywood is currently Hollywood, and um, and just the ups and downs of being an actor and just all the challenges, all good and bad, just positive, negative, the journey. It makes all the sense in the world when you think about it. And that's something that I've already uh, try, you know, I always continue to exercise that even through the craziest times and the toughest times. So that, that, that's it. That's it. Don't let Hollywood awesome. take away. Your and that's very challenging. And, and even when you're, even when you're like, it'll never happen, but it's, it's very important to, to keep, you know, keep that in mind as you're going through this journey in this, in this industry. So. Mm hmm uh, I give that answer a 9.8. Very good. But how about this question? Uh, Rico, you've done a lot of things as an actor. What is the one kind of role that is your dream role of things that you have not yet done? What would be something? It doesn't have to be a specific character from a specific show. Just have you always wanted yeah. to be the zany best friend? Have you always wanted to be the the biker guy what what's what's that next thing you really want to do doctor fireman um in a show and uh <laughs> uh yeah doctor fireman because i always said to myself if i wasn't an actor i would have loved to have been a doctor i would have loved to have been a fireman uh, Whoa. Was kind of 
like those childhood dream cool jobs and just really cool, <laughs> totally you know and uh yeah yeah so dr fireman um everybody in the live chat in the comments below right now would you rather see rico as a doctor or a fireman let us know Ooh. that's a that's a toughie you were close to five and four because I remember one role you had as a policeman in a, in a modern series of some sort. Probably more yes. than one, right? Yes. I've played a lot of cops. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So and actually, I could see you. Yeah. And I, I see I, you typecast more as a fireman, but I think it'd be more of a fun, uh, like, a, probably more of a fun <laughs> acting challenge to be a doctor. Dude, mm -hmm. in, no? in, 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 as an actor, one of the things that you get looked at a lot, as we all know, is cop number one cop number two cop mm. number three oh yeah guard type of thing i did play a fireman in a crime drama procedural mm. uh once but to be able to like have a whole series where i'm playing that would just be <laughs> that'd just be awesome. explore the character yeah mm. yeah that just, yeah, that that's just too. Yeah. while doing that particular job so yeah one final note on that rico and i once played police officers or fbi or detectives or something like detectives. that yeah. detectives in a in a show together um but that is a a story for a different day it's, i'll never forget <laughs> i will never forget that production and rico knows why we had some very good laughs but as soon as they said action totally serious we were just yeah, nice. Or am I? Yeah, or right. am I lying? Do I have it reversed? <laughs> yes, I do. We'll never tell. Can we just like, settle down, please. <laughs> just great stuff, man. Great work. Yeah. All right. This was this was me when uh, we were doing that scene together. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> anyway, could, could not hold a laugh to save our life. Our, our serious it, was, it was glorious. Goes. So everybody, uh, where can they find you online, Rico? Sure. Uh, Instagram is I sure. am Rico Anderson. Uh, I am Rico Anderson is also through Twitter as well as Facebook. And uh, my website, Rico Anderson. Dot. All right. Hey. Good stuff. And now for the cheese. It's time to cut right through it and get into <laughs> the terrible twos. <laughs> Thought talking up to me was the cheese, but okay, here we are. Muhammad <laughs> knows what's up. He's doing the karate chop. It's the final two questions of the show. The two most important questions. Question number one goes directly to Muhammad on a scale of one to ten. Oh, be nice. What would you give <laughs> this first episode of Three's Company? Well, it starts with a three already. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> just just kidding, just kidding. What I've written down, I'll just stick with what I wrote down before we started the show. What I wrote down was a 6.4. So, like, you know, I enjoyed it by the end. Like I said, the first half, I was not thrilled. But the second half brought up for me, like, okay, okay. I, I, I feel like it was better than it, I feared it could have been. <laughs> 6.4, not too bad. Rico E, what would you give this first episode? All right, party people. I'm going to give the first episode of Three's Companies an 8.76. I precision I, on that number. I love that episode. <laughs> and uh, I was here for all the setups. I was here for all the comedy. I was here for all the things that just really tapped into everybody's talents and thing that just made the show the success that it was and continues to be even in reruns so mm -hmm. i forgot i forgot the number i gave 8. 8.76 8.76 8. do you stand by that Damn, numbers in there all right i stand by it Move all right on. now we've got an even tougher question <laughs> and it goes to darth darth what would you give this first episode of three's company mm. a lot of yeah and God, and you gotta hit. yeah you can't you can't uh, without looking at the whole entire show um, I gotta give it high marks because it's a pretty solid right out the gate. I'm a, I'm, I'm gonna make a short answer. I'm just gonna say nine. Give it a solid nine. No point Very seven. Good. No point. No decimals. All right. No fractions. To the third power. All right. <laughs> well. The remainder. 
I have given this the highest mark of the day. I gave it a 9.1. It was going to be a 9, but I was like, you know, let me just bump it up to a 9.1. Last night when I watched this, I was like, why am I just going to stop at a 9? That's rude. Give it a (laughs) 9.1, Darth. And then when Darth (laughs) gave it a 9 and stopped there, I was like, see, that's what I wanted to avoid. Yeah, that's why so, you love this show. New like, is it a nine? Come on. It's a very good pilot, especially for yeah, its time. It was a good setup. It was well written. Yeah. I can't really think of anything I would have changed at the time. You know, you can and, and it's not just the writing. Clearly the acting was there, the characters oh, yeah. were there. They added, you know, Jack Tripper or John Ritter probably added the part where he covers up his bikini line at <laughs> first when he wakes up. These are the funny choices that he makes and they all make. He, whenever he does something silly, like turn the water on even more on himself, he stops for a moment and it kind of hams it up for the audience. Like, see what I've done now. You know, right. the ropers were great. The ladies were great. 9.1. Well-deserved. I think it was very good. But question number two. And and by the way, I'm very relieved that it was good. But I thought it, I, I had the faith. Best yeah. favorite yeah. show of all time. Three's Company. You can come and knock on my door, but I'll never tell you where I live. So, golf. Uh, <laughs> wow. Don't come. Uh, question number two. For the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Three's Company with the legendary Suzanne Summers, And everybody else is now gone except for Joyce DeWitt, who played Janet. Oh, wow. They've all passed away. Uh, John Ritter wow. passed away at an early age, young age. Yes, Rico. Yeah, I, I I would like to add on to that in terms of surviving cast members. Larry or Lana? Uh, Larry. Larry's still with us. Oh, Terry. Priscilla Barnes, who played Terry. Yeah, Barnes. Yes, Jenny very Lee good. Harrison, who played Cindy Snow, who I believe was Chrissy's sister. Cousin. Yeah, or a cousin, cousin. I think. She was in okay. like 10 episodes. And yeah. and Priscilla Barnes was also in uh, the Devil's Rejects. So yeah. Oh, okay. That's right. She kept it moving. Mm-hmm. All right. Very good. Good knowledge. Thank you very much, Rico. But I meant of these five. But yes, absolutely. There's still a few. They should have a reunion that we can all visit. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, <laughs> Doctor Muhammad Noor. <laughs> Muhammad was like waiting. He's like, where do we, is he going to finish his sentence? (laughs) What would you, of your own volition, watch the second episode? My fear, this is one of the reasons I didn't give it a very high mark too, is is that I don't love shows where the main character is just some horny guy. And that that's a big part of the plot line. And like, I mean, that's so fundamental to show in sense, even in the intro sequence, right? So that to me is always like, oh. He's a sweet guy. Tell him, Darth. Don't really tell him. But. I don't know. I, mean, I believe yeah. he's sweet, but it's still like if that's most of the show, I'm like, you know, I'm not that's here spooky. for that. I don't really want to watch that. It's like, I mean, I'll say yes, just in the sense that, like, would I watch it? I'll just say yes. But I, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm probably not going to do it. <laughs> but, you know, God. if it happened to be on the TV, I wouldn't turn it off. I'd be like, okay, I guess I'll watch that. <laughs> that was a close one. Everybody in the live chat in the comments below, please convince Muhammad. The Jack Tripper is not just a hornball. There's plenty of that to go around when Larry Dallas shows up. Yeah, Jack is actually hey, yeah, man, yeah. the sweet guy of the show. He's the nice guy. Yeah. Uh, Rico, and, and that's going to be four yeses. Thank goodness. Rico, uh, would you watch the second? Hell yeah. Come on, y'all. It's three's company. You got, you know, hot Suzanne Summers. Rest in peace. You have Janet, the 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 smooth, chill one who just kind of went along with everything. You have John Ritter, the late great, <coughs> get choked up. John Ritter, rest in peace. <coughs> wow, you got the Ropers. I got the Ropers. <coughs> I'm dying over here. I got the Ropers, and just their brand of comedy that is just. <laughs> Amazing. Tell Sorry, us guys. about Mr. Furley after. <clears throat> and then there's Mr. Oh, Furley man. later on down the line who just, you know, Don Knotts. What he what, kills it. If, if the ropers aren't gonna be there, why do you not have Don Knotts there? So just to, like, Larry, 
Larry, Jack's boy, Larry. Um, just so much great comedy, so much fun, fun, just shenanigans in 30 minutes. Um, everybody had their strengths and they played them well. And um, I'm here mm -hmm. for it, man. I, 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 I would watch the second. Nice. Time's over. What about you, Darth? Would you watch the second episode on Pluto TV that you watch all the time? Hey, yeah. when I found out that Pluto had its own threes company channel where they're Ooh. just streaming it 24 seven, holy cow. Yeah, I, if I was just going off of this without my knowledge of uh, all the other threes company episodes, just going off of this one, I think I would. You know, there's the the, the, the charisma of these guys, especially John Ritter. Yeah. Um, and and a Farley, I'm always kind of a Farley. I'm always kind of <clears throat> curious what Don Knotts looked like without that without that a uh, big old hairpiece on his head. I just wonder what what's going on under there. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good right off the bat. Yeah, they they grab me right off the bat. Don Knotts hairpiece. Where did they go? Oh man, yeah. Watch one of those episodes. It's very. Maybe you don't notice it on the old on the old two oh, yeah, TV, maybe. but it's Not very. Well, uh, for me, it's a yes. Um, oh, I remember growing you. up as a kid, uh, Mr. Furley was initially my favorite character, I think. Yeah. And then as I got older, I'm like, and I always thought the, the Ropers were kind of dumb and I love Mr. Furley. But now as I get older, I'm like, oh, no, 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 Ryan. Don Knotts is great physical <laughs> comedy, great, you know, oh, man, physical yeah. humor. But the Ropers, oh, Mr. Roper is my <laughs> idol, basically. All right. And, and, his, and his famous look. You yeah. Know, oh, sure yeah. Famous look. I mean, the break in the fourth wall where he'd be like, "That's not what you told me last night, Helen." Wow. <laughs> and he would like look yeah. at the camera, like, oh, "Did you did you like that?" And then they'd laugh, and he yeah. would like his and eyes would light up. Nuts for it. <laughs> it. It was just perfect. It was just like, did he just look at us? Yes. What? Hey, yeah. for, what is he aware we're our... watching him? Yes, and he loved. He's like, "Did you love that? Did you? Isn't that hilarious?" Anyway, <laughs> who's with you? Muhammad's yeah. like, you guys are going to make me sick. That's enough. So, <laughs> like, I got to go four eat. Yeses. Cool out, Everybody in the live chat in the comments below, please convince Muhammad to watch two more episodes. That's his that's his homework for the week. Just watch the next two episodes. That's on, it. Buddy. It's free. Please do it. That's it for us. What I'm trying to say is this podcast, they say Three's Company, but it takes four to show Three's Company the love that it deserves. God bless you. God speed Suzanne Summers. Rest in peace. This podcast was a that big love fest for a 70s uh, sitcom. <laughs> this podcast put the slap <clears throat> in slapstick. Ooh, I like that. <clears throat> Focus. Sorry. Sorry, I got I got nothing. I can't think of anything. It was uh yeah, it's great. It was fun. <laughs> All right, everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much we'll for it. joining us in the comments below. Make your suggestions for 80s shows. Can't promise we'll love it as much as this one. Muhammad will. Uh, <laughs> what I'm sure. trying to say is... WTF Benson, WTF Soap. If they're 80s, yep. With Rene Aubergenois. Don't forget what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg always likes to say. Don't forget to be an organ donor. And don't forget to watch the first of things. All right, everybody. Freeze frame like Mr. Roper. <laughs> <laughs> ¶¶